think when I look at lions, I see the the wildness in their eyes. I love the the energy that's behind their eyes and the knowledge that such a big cat can still exist uh, in the world today. It's just it's something that excites me when I see them. When I first traveled to Africa in the early 90s, I was struck by a landscape where both people and wildlife interact. And I heard the lions roar and I was hooked. What we scientifically know about lions is almost the same as what we Maasai culturally know about lions. It's just two different languages. And when you bring them together, you get this understanding of what a real lion is. In the communal areas, I mean, the big cats are disappearing. They'll disappear in our lifetimes if we don't do something. Living on a landscape where there are both people and the world's largest cat is exciting. If we lose that, we're losing something that can never be replaced. If you want to be successful, you have to have the participation of local people. And the ideas for conservation have to be driven by them. They have to be something that are feasible and workable. The local communities, which is why Living Walls are so successful, it was their idea. For lasting conservation outside of protected areas, which is where the bulk of the protection is needed now, you've got to come up with ways that the people can sustainably live in those areas. To me, in my experience with conservation, we can leave the lions. The lions can take care of themselves. But if they don't have the support of the people, they won't have a place um, for much longer in this world um, because the people just won't tolerate living with them. Maasai land is booming population-wise, and their primary way of life is pastoralism. And pastoralism in these areas require vast areas of grazing land. And you can't have vast areas of grazing land if they're full of people and full of cultivation. Wildlife is an incredible resource here. It can help build a secondary economy on the step that works hand in hand with traditional pastoralism. Livestock and wildlife can get along. You know, if they don't really step up and protect what resources they do have, there's not going to be enough for anyone, period. And the key to community-based conservation is education, capacity, building skills. That takes time. You don't do it in a day. You don't do it in months. You have to make the commitment to truly help people build those skills, whether it takes a year or five years. Our approach for our educational programs, in a nutshell, is take the scientific knowledge that we have, combine it with the traditional and cultural knowledge that they have, come up with at least a positive step in the right direction, you know, at the very least. And it's working. It's a fine line between personal life and work life. I mean, you, you actually live your work. If you really want to build capacity, you can't build it in a day. It takes a lifetime of work and you have to make that commitment and recognize that your one special impact is going to be in this place and by giving your life to it, you're really going to be able to make a difference. That's what we're here to do.